At the end of looking at the direct comparison test, we found that it's kind of limited if the algebra doesn't work out in the right way, meaning we can't prove the inequality in the right direction, the direct comparison test fails to tell us anything. And so we turn to the limit comparison test, which is similar in the sense that we're going to compare our series that we're interested in to one that we know the answer for, generally either a p-series or a geometric series. And then if we find a comparison between the two, if these two series track together, then their convergence and divergence will happen together. Similar to what we did with the integral test as well. So when I use that term track together, basically we're looking to see if their values are more or less consistent with each other. Now the way we actually check that is we divide one by the other and we see if that quotient, that fraction, is more or less consistent. If that fraction goes to zero, that means that the bottom is growing much faster than the top is. And if that fraction goes to infinity, that means the top is growing much faster than the bottom. But if that fraction doesn't go to zero or to infinity, that means that those two values are kind of growing or shrinking at the same rate. That's informally speaking what this test basically checks. So formally what we do is we take our two series, we divide one by the other, and then we see if that fraction trends towards zero as you go further down the values of k, or if it goes to infinity. In either of those cases, the series don't track together, so this test doesn't tell us anything. Those two series kind of break apart from each other. But if that fraction has a finite non-zero limit, then the two series converge or diverge together. So this limit here that looks kind of complicated, all we're saying is if we divide those two series one by the other and then we take a limit, if we get something that's neither zero nor infinity, then the convergence and divergence of the two series will be identical. So let's see that with the example that we couldn't do with the direct comparison test. The series one over k squared minus four, which looks a lot like one over k squared, just with that negative four included, which we don't think should change much. So one over k squared is a convergent p-series. So we want the one that we compare to to be one that we can find the answer for pretty easily, which is why we use p-series and geometric series, generally speaking. But in theory, you could compare to something that you could solve with the integral test, for instance, even though that would probably be more work than we would like to do. So what we're going to do to compare these two is we're going to take the limit as k goes to infinity of one divided by the other. Now I'm going to do one over k squared divided by one over k squared minus four. And the order that you divide in is not crucial for the comparison test to work, but it is important for the algebra that we're going to work out to figure out this limit it's easier one way than the other. So in this order, if I divide them this way, this can be simplified to be k squared minus four over k squared. And so then I can easily write that as one minus four over k squared if you like, or you could notice that the powers on the top and the bottom are equal, and so the limit will be the ratio of leading coefficients. Either way you do it, you get one as your limit at the end. And then the crucial piece here is that this is not zero and it's not infinity. So it's finite and non-zero, which means that the limit comparison test does apply. If we did this limit and we got zero or we got infinity, then this test would break down and we would need another way to check it. But because it's finite and non-zero, we know that these two series do the same thing. And then, since we know that one over k squared converges, we can put all that together to say that the series we're looking at, one over k squared minus four 
also converges. So that's how the limit comparison test applies. We need to know the answer for a similar series, and then we need to get this limit to be finite and non-zero in order for this test to apply. And then we can draw our conclusions from that. If we had divided in the other order, it still would have worked. We would have had k squared over k squared minus four, which we still could have used that principle of the leading coefficients, but the algebra wouldn't have worked out quite as easily. So you may find yourself in a situation where dividing in one order is easier algebraically than the other order. And so just use the one that's easier. And if you start doing one of them and you find out that you need to go back and reverse the order, that's totally fine. The order that you divide them, you can do either way. Uh, just pick the one that's easier algebraically. Let me show you a few more examples of this. For instance, we can compare one to a geometric series. We have one over two to the K minus one. That looks like one over two to the K. Which we know to be a convergent geometric series. We've looked at that one several times now. You could write it as one half to the K or one half times one half to the K minus one if you want to fit the standard geometric form. But the R value there, the repeated multiplication value is one half, which is less than one. So by the geometric series conclusion, we know that it's convergent. So we want to divide one of these by the other. And if, for instance, we did the limit of one over two to the K minus one divided by one over two to the K, when we simplify this, we would get two to the K over two to the K minus one. Remember that when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. And at this point, there's not any good algebra we can do. So I'm actually gonna stop and go back and divide in the other direction. So I mentioned that sometimes it's important just for the sake of carrying out this limit that you divide in one order versus the other. Just a matter of what is easier to simplify. So here, if I write it this way, we'll get two to the K minus one over two to the K. And now I can break this up into two fractions two to the K over two to the K, which is one, minus one over two to the K. And of course, as K goes to infinity, one over two to the K goes to zero, so this goes to one. And again, that limit is finite and non-zero. Which means that according to the limit comparison test, these two series do the same thing. So it's important when you're doing one of these tests that you understand what the conclusions of the test actually tells you. The conclusion of the limit comparison test is that those two do the same thing. And then we're separately applying the geometric series conclusion that one of them is convergent, which then combined with the limit comparison test tells us that the other one is also convergent. So a lot of this is sort of an exercise in logic recognizing what these tests actually tell you and how you can put that information together with the other information that you have from other tests. But it's important that you, when you get to the end of the limit comparison test, just the fact that limit is finite and non-zero doesn't automatically tell you the series converges. It just tells you that it does the same thing as the other one you're looking at. So if we started comparing it to one that diverges, and the limit comparison test came out finite and non-zero, then that would just tell us that our series diverges instead of converging. So let me show you another example of the limit comparison test where that happens. Now to find what this one compares to, notice that we have this rational expression, meaning we have powers of k on the top and powers of k on the bottom. 
But if you were to simplify this thing down, the most crucial piece to this would be the first term of each piece. The first term in the numerator, the first term in the denominator. Because as k increases, k squared and k cubed are going to have more of an impact than the other lower powers of k. So if you ignore everything else and you just focus on those, this kind of looks similar to the series 1 over k. It kind of looks like k squared over k cubed with a bunch of other stuff added to it, but at its core it looks like k squared over k cubed which simplifies to 1 over k. So if we can take a limit according to the limit comparison test of 1 divided by the other and that limit comes out to be finite and non-zero then we will know what our series does because we know this one is divergent. We know it's divergent because it's a p series where p equals 1. It's also the harmonic series which we know from the very beginning of all this is divergent. So if we can find this limit that is finite and non-zero then it'll turn out that we can prove this more complicated series is also divergent. So we're going to take the limit and to make the algebra simpler I'm going to divide our series by 1 over k. And the way I'm going to write that is taking our series and multiplying by k over 1. So to do this now I'm going to multiply the numerator by k and then we just need to be able to evaluate this limit. And of course back from calc 1 or even from pre-calc we remember that a limit of a rational expression like this where the powers are equal is going to be equal to the ratio of leading coefficients which in our case is 3 fourths. That of course is finite and non-zero. So we found that this more complicated series tracks along with 1 over k and does the same thing and since we know that 1 over k is divergent, we know that this series also diverges based on the limit comparison test and comparing to the harmonic series.